Okay, right, so we learned previously that um, what thermodynamics was all about, um, but now we're gonna look and compare it to speed or something called kinetics. All right, so thermodynamics is denoted by delta G, which is gives free energy, and it's delta G equals delta H minus T delta S. Okay, and we saw that something that has a delta G of negative was gonna be spontaneous, and something with a delta G that was positive is gonna be non spontaneous. So that just will tell us that over a period of time, we know that if it's spontaneous, that the reaction will occur eventually. But it may need a lot of energy to do so. Um, so thermodynamically, it's favorable, but that doesn't mean it's going to happen. So we need to know how fast is this going to happen and how likely will it happen. All right? And that's what speed and kinetics is all about. So speed is determined by this equation K equals A E to the negative E A over R T. Okay, so the first thing I want to make clear is that this K is not the same K as we saw in thermodynamics, which was the K E Q prime. Okay, this K is the rate, so it's a lowercase K. Um, the next thing is that this A is something called the steric factor. Steric factor is not important, it's just a constant that's out in the front. Um, and it, it may change, it may be constant throughout the course of the, the reaction. Uh, but all we need to know is that this is how the collisions occur. It's, it's how rapidly or unrapidly or how likely or unlikely um, collisions will occur between an enzyme and the reactants. Right? Um, so don't worry too much about the steric factor. But these ones that we really need to um, worry about, which is activation energy and temperature. All right, so Ea is activation energy and temperature is the T. All right, so what this is telling us is that K equals A over E to the Ea over RT. Because right? we just moved that over to the bottom because it was to the negative power. And E is just that, um, you know, with the natural log you have that E. So it's just a constant, so don't worry about that. Um, so what this is saying is that if we uh, decrease the activation energy, right? This number would go down, then the net e reaction will go up. The net equation will go up, so K will increase. Um, if temperature is increased, K will also increase. We see that um, temperature will decrease this bottom term, and that will make this whole K be bigger. So this is very important to know. When you increase the temperature, you're going to also increase the speed. You're going to increase the rate. When you decrease the activation energy, you're going to increase the, the speed as well. And the reverse would be true. So how do we change the activation energy and what exactly is this activation energy? We know what temperature is, you know, that's uh, pretty obvious, but activation energy. Right, so activation energy is this right here. So if this is a graph of delta G versus the reactants uh, over products, between this point and the top, so where we started from the reactants to the very top is our activation energy. Um, and this right here is our delta G. Okay, so activation is the energy needed to start something. So, okay, so maybe we can think of this uh, reactant something like graphite and this, um, this product something like diamond. Okay, so we're trying to convert this graphite into diamond, but there's this big activation energy that we have to overcome. So activation energy is the energy needed in order to activate a reaction, to convert the graphite into the diamond. Right? Yeah, it's a spontaneous reaction, but that doesn't mean it's going to occur rapidly. You don't, you don't see your pencil turning into diamond all of a sudden, or else we'd all be rich. Um, so that's why we see this activation energy. So activation energy can be affected by something called enzymes. So enzymes are proteins, so they're made of, of amino acids. Um, so enzymes can help to get reactions to occur. And if you can, if you can think of this as a, um, an enzyme, there's a couple ways that this, these enzymes can work and we'll see how they, they work um, later. Um, but say you have a reactant here and then you have another reactant that it has to work with. So this is A and these are B particles. Um, a way that this might help is that this enzyme will hold A right here and B has a, a pocket that it can fit in so that A and B can react so that they can make this final product. So that's just an example of how enzymes may work. Um, but pretty much enzymes will affect activation energy and how they do that, they will decrease activation energy. So enzymes decrease activation energy. So if we decrease the activation energy, that's going to increase the rate, right? Um, so that's all we really need to know. Um, you know, we'll go into more detail later. 
Uh, but for now, just know this basic graph um, and delta G versus activation energy.